Welcome to MEI Mechanics. We're on the topic of work, energy and power one, work and energy, and this is video 1.1, work. Now, we talk about work being done when a force is applied to an object and the object moves through a distance. Now, work is a scalar quantity and it can be defined in two equivalent ways. Um, so the work done by a constant force, and we're only going to be talking about constant forces here, um, is the size of that force multiplied by the distance that is moved in the direction of that force. Um, or, equivalently, we can take the distance that is moved and multiply that by the component of the force in the direction um, of that associated uh, displacement. Okay, so actually both force and displacement are vectors and what we're really doing here is combining two vectors in such a way that gives us a scalar quantity. Uh, when you study vectors in more detail you'll see that this thing is actually a scalar product um, but as far as we're concerned at this stage with the mechanics we can just think about either resolving a force in the direction of the motion or resolving the displacement in the direction of the force whichever is most convenient to us at that point in time. Uh, and work is actually a form of energy um, and so its uh, unit is, well, the Newton meter, which comes from the idea of it being a, a distance times a force, uh, but it's also the uh, given the units of joules, and one joule is equal to one Newton meter. But joules are the, uh, the unit which is most commonly used for energy. So just a little bit more about uh, work being a scalar quantity. Um, because the force may be uh, acting positively or negatively with respect to the direction of the motion, that means that the value we get for the work can be positive or negative. Now that might seem confusing at first because a lot of the scalar quantities that you'll have met so far, things like speed, can't be negative. Um, so what's different about work? Well, as you'll see in a later video, work is actually a, a type of energy, in fact it's a change in energy. So because a change can obviously be positive or negative, then that means work can be positive or negative. Um, now, we mentioned that we're going to be talking about constant forces only. It is possible to calculate work for a variable force, but we're going to restrict ourselves to constant forces uh, for this work. So, um, first thing to say about work then, and this is obvious if you think about its definition, is that if nothing moves, then no work is done. Now, it's important to bear that in mind because often that can seem a bit counterintuitive. If you take this um, example here, you've got this, um, this man who's holding this heavy weight. At the minute he's not moving it, he's just holding it where it is. Now he's going to feel like he's really doing a lot of work there. And that's, that's more of a biological thing. So his body is having to do stuff internally to keep his muscles tight and everything like that. But in terms of what he's doing to the weight itself, there's no energy being transferred between him and the weight um, because the weight isn't moving. All right, so there's no work being done when the thing is still. So when is work done? Well, work's done when something moves. Uh, so here's an example. We have a sledge that is being pulled horizontally along a, sm a smooth surface, smooth ice, by a constant horizontal force of 45 newtons. Now it's important to say that it's a smooth surface because that means that that's then the only force that is acting horizontally. Okay, obviously it'll be gravity and the normal reaction which are acting vertically. We don't need to worry about those in this question. Um, but there's no friction. If it wasn't a smooth surface then we'd have to think about the friction as well. All right, so this is a simple case where we can just deal with one force. And it's moving a distance of 10 meters. And because that force is horizontal, then that force is in the direction of the motion. So we don't need to worry in this case about resolving anything. We simply multiply that 45 newtons by that 10 meters and that gives us then a result of 450 joules. Very straightforward. So that then leads us to ask then, well what if the rope wasn't uh, horizontal? What if it was at an angle to the horizontal? So let's say it was at an angle of 50 degrees to the horizontal still with a tension of 45 newtons and the sledge still moving by 10 meters. How much work is now done? Well this diagram is showing that 
situation there. Um, so what we're going to need to do, and remember we have a choice, we can either think about the the distance travelled in the direction of the force, or we can think about the component of the force in the direction of distance travelled. I think in this case it's obviously going to be easiest to just do what we're familiar with, which is resolving that force in the horizontal direction. So here we go then. So this uh, force can form the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle here. We have an angle of 50 degrees here. We just need the component that is horizontal, so we just need this component here. Uh, and so that component there, because it's adjacent to the angle, is going to be 45 cos 50 degrees. All right. So that means that the work done is equal to 45 cos 50 degrees multiplied by the distance travelled, which is 10 meters. And that works out at approximately 289 joules. So just compare that, if you remember with the previous example, where the work done was 450 joules. So clearly what's happened is because the, even though the, the tension in that rope is the same, because it's not being pulled horizontally now, the, there's not actually as much work done when the sledge is moved through that distance with that same tension because it's at an angle to the horizontal. So that was a very short introduction to the idea of work. And that concludes video 1.1. The next video, 1.2, is going to be on kinetic energy.